Hey guys, welcome back to iXoft Original, and this is our official YouTube channel. Before we head over to today's edition, if you know you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, do well to subscribe. And on today's video, we're going to see how we can create, read, update, insert, and delete in VB.net along with MySQL using PHP my admin. Yeah, I know these are some of the things you guys have been wait, waiting for for me to um, do a video on that. So we're just going to dive into that. So first thing first, we're just going to create a new project. And um, this project is actually going to be from a Windows form application.net. So let's actually choose um, Visual Basic and it is on Windows desktop. So what we're going to do is just go through and select Windows form and it's going to handle with the .NET framework. So just click on next and let's call this crude system, right? Let's use the default framework. Click on create. Then let's wait for it to complete the process. Right. So since we have um, this right here, we're good to go because we can actually start building something. Well, uh, what we're going to do is very simple. We're just going to create a very basic system which will allow us to communicate with our um, with our backend so where the backend is going to be is actually going to be with my php admin so let's create a new database and let's call this students students db right let's call this students db let's click on create and we have student db right here so this we're going to create a new table so this table we're just going to call students you understand so just click on create and this is going to create this for you the first one is going to be the id that is going to be auto increment so just click on this auto increment or not this one yeah this ai a underscore i it means auto increment and we're just going to take the um, name of the student so we say student underscore name then we go uh, we go to age, then we go to class, right? So we have student name, age, and class, right? So these are going to be VACA. So we set the length to 255. Just set it to 255. Do the same thing for this. Great. So since we have this, let's just go ahead and then click on save great so we have student table like this which of course is really really good here now we can actually go ahead and then you know structure our design according to how we want it to be so i'll just add a group box and this group box is going to be where it's going to contain the information i actually need so i'll just say student information all right so i need a text box and that is going to be a text box this is going to be the id right here so let's add a label just right here so just say id right so this is going to be the id let's just bring this here I'm not going to be that you know so we copy these two just hold shift and copy paste it one more time and after the ID, it will just come down here. Then this is going to be full name, right? So instead of the ID, let's just say full name, just like that. So let's just bring this here just to align them. You understand? So bring it here. Let's extend this. That's going to be the full name and we need the age. So we're actually going to copy and paste this one more time. So this is going to be the age and um, we need one more that is going to be the class. You understand? So um, yeah, let's just copy this one and just paste it here. And this is actually going to be the class. 
you understand so let's just change this to class nice and i'll just use a um a combo box for this so just click on this to create a new combo box very very simple one so i'm just going to shrink this down and also shrink this a little bit down like that that's going to be very simple great so this i'll just click on this guy and say edit items so i'll just say um class one class two class three class four class five class six j h s one j h s two j h s three good so um i think these are the classes we want to you know handle for now so just click on okay and with this just go to the drop down um i think that is going to be the um um hold on the drop down style let's just set it to drop down to list this is it good so we will add another group box and that is actually going to be the student data right that is going to be the student data so i'll just change this to student data great so since we have this i'll just add a list box you see like a list view let's add a list view right in here and this list view is actually going to be where our list of data is going to be displayed right so we just edit the columns first and we add two columns like that so we have one two three and four so we will just add four columns so the first column is actually going to be the id and the second column is going to be the full name and then the third column is going to be the age and then the fourth column is going to be the class right so we click on ok and we don't see anything here unless we change the view mode to list i think then we will just set um the grid view like the grid lines we have something called the grid lines so we actually have to set the grid lines to visible you understand so let's just click on this and it's going to be um show grid i guess where is this thing mm. okay list view let's see uh where is this thing Hmm. it should be yeah grid lines there you go so let's set this to true and let's go back here let's switch the mode from list to tile no i think it's detailed good so since we have this we can actually go ahead and then edit the columns again and we can specify the height of this so let's go to the width uh the full name and let's set the width to 150 and there you go you can see it's just expanded right so with the id let's set it up to like 40 that's good and let's set the full name to 170 that's good and let's set the class to 70 or 80 I think is good and let's set the full name back to 180 make it one let's make it 200 that's good uh let's make it like 190 that's good excellent so we have this and we are actually good to go so save your project so you can actually get to know how things will be going why okay so before we move on to the next stuff i would like to add some couple of buttons which will you know work out for me so to make this looks very simple i'm just gonna make it this way like i bring this here and i'll just bring this full name up here just make it this way nice so just gonna bring this up here but i'll just align this to this side bring this here just make a little bit big like that great okay i mean it's really really good 
that's really nice so let's see how we're gonna arrange it then we will be good to go all right so we have the age let's just bring the age here i think this is gonna be cool that's nice so we need buttons you know these are very very good and we ha we actually have to get to know how to work along with it so we need like four buttons so we go in we search in for button just a normal a regular button add one button here so let's just bring this up a little bit so we add one button here and this button is going to be called insert and all we're going to do is copy this and then paste it three times yep there you go there you go so yeah just make it this like that great so now what we're going to do is just rename them this is going to be update and this is going to be delete okay and this is gonna be show we will use this to show um, the current data we actually have um, that is gonna be much more cooler if we really want to do that so um, yeah this is what we will be using to do that's awesome so just you know arrange your things according to how you want it to be and everything is gonna be cool right so the next stuff we want to do is just rename everything you understand so this is going to be txt txt id and this is going to be txt full name right so txt full name and this is going to be txt age txt age and this is going to be it is a combo box so we will just say cmb class and this button is going to be insert so we're just going to change the button name from button one to btn insert and this is going to be update so we're just going to be btn update and this is going to be delete so it's going to be btn delete and this is going to be show so we're just going to be btn show great this is going to be the data list so we're just going to call this um data list view just like that right so since we are good to go um we are we are halfway done now the next thing to do is we will be using mysql so we have to install mysql to the system so to do that just right click on your project and go to nuget manage nuget packages and basically you have to find yourself to have an internet connection before you can proceed to do this so let's go to the browse and from the browse section we're just going to click on search then we say my sql just my sql like this and you see we have my sql dot data we have my sql i mean a whole lot of stuffs right here you understand it goes like it has a whole lot of stuff right here but the one we interested in is this guy mysql.data so just click on insert install sorry and wait for it it will ask for another permission just you know accept that permission then you will be good to go there you go just click on apply i accept and this will be installed in, onto your system for you Right, let's hope for it to complete the installation process. You can see every single move here. When it is done, it is it, it is actually going to prompt you that, hey, whatever we did, we're good to go. It's gonna prompt you that. So it says installed to this. We actually have to wait for it to prompt us that it has been installed successfully. And indeed, in fact, if it is being installed successfully, you will surely see um you will surely see it right here yep now if yours is not been able to install like it takes forever to do the installation and all that you know you have to find the time for it because because it has to install everything and you know you get everything just right else you would have to download the package 
which I have given you in the link in the description so that you can import it. So after everything is done, you should see this right here. And you could see that from the output section, this is the error section, don't see any error, but you see a success like this. Now, how can we see this? You can see a whole bunch of things has been added to your um, references, including my SQL.data, and that is actually what we needed. So how could we see if it is um, being installed successfully? So to do that is it's very, very simple. We just have to go to the back end, like you go to the coding site, and all you have to do is you just have to you know do some import to see if it is actually working. So we're just gonna say import my SQL dot data dot um my SQL client. And if this imports successfully, it means you are good to go. All right, thank you very much for joining me on this video. If you find this video to be helpful, um, please give a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you, if you have not subscribed yet. On our next video, on our next um, part, we're going to see how we can structure our connections and start the main coding. Until then, have a nice day. And Microsoft Original is out.